Here's a statics problem that just looks really hard on the onset here. And so it's something like this. You might see things things uh, at piers and things where boats might be lifted out of the water and so on. But it's like this uh, rotatable strut here. There's a big strut right here and there's a hinge in the ground. And this thing can obviously pivot left and right or whatnot. And there's a long guy wire right here, a cable sort of anchored to the ground over here that goes all the way up and attaches to the top of this strut here supporting the thing. And there's a hanging mass on it like this that might be moved around or just sort of some sort of crane system. It really looks intimidating when you look at it uh, to solve as a physics problem. And typically what these problems might be asking here is they'd like to know what the tension is in the cable here, what the X force might be in this hinge or this pivot right here, and what the Y force might be also. So a question like that or pretty typical of a situation like this. So um, once again, uh, it looks pretty bad, but if we just sort of let the equations guide us here, we know for statics that the sum of the x-forces are equal to zero, the sum of the y-forces are equal to zero, and the sum of the torques are equal to zero as well. That's sort of our condition for statics here. And so what we'll do to start the problem like we do in the other ones, let's just get those forces identified. That's probably the best thing to do. Let's ID the forces on the strut. So we'll just say that these equations here focus on the strut. That's going to be our most important thing here. Okay. So what we'll do then is, well, go and identify those forces on the strut. So what I see happening on the strut then is I definitely see uh, the Y force of the hinge up like that, and I definitely see the X force of the hinge over like that. Now, I could have the directions wrong, but we'll just say that's where I'm going to set them. Uh, my algebraic solutions will have minus signs in them if they're in the opposite direction or whatnot. I also have the tension in this guy wire pulling down like that, and tensions always pull away from their points of contact, so there's a tension in there. And lastly, well, not lastly, it's still not the last one. I definitely have this downwards weight of this hanging mass on it. I'll call that little m times g. And here's my last one right here. I have the weight of the strut straight down like that. I'll call that capital M times g. So I think with that, I've definitely identified all the forces on the strut. I've got the hinge x and y forces. I've got the tension. I've got the weight of the strut itself. And I've got the weight of this hanging mass on the strut. So with that, then, I think we're good to, uh, good to go, then, and see if we can figure some things out about this problem here. And I think it'll look like this. We'll just start filling in these statics equations here. So we'll start, I guess, with the sum of the x forces, r equal to 0. Now, we have to do a little bit of a geometry up here, too, because I'm sort of looking at the system going, okay, look, this is a 45-degree angle in here. And so if this is a 45-degree angle, that means this big angle over here is going to be 180 minus 45, or 135. That's going to be a 135 degree angle. And the reason why I need that is because we need this angle up here to resolve the tension into its two components. So this is 130, this is 135, that's 165. And if these are 165, then I think that means that this is going to be a 15 degree angle in here because the internal angles of a triangle all add up to 180 degrees. So a little 15 degree angle in there. And if I wanted to maybe look at it in terms of the XY coordinate system then, I'd have to sort of get at some sort of x component right here. So this will be, this purple line here will be the tx, and this downwards line like right here will be the ty. Because at some point I'm going to have to resolve this tension into its x and y components. So I see the tx and the ty, and if that's a 15 degrees in there, and this is a 90 degree angle, that makes this little angle in here 75 degrees in there, something like that. So I think that's going to be the core angle I'm going to use to resolve those tensions. Okay, so work that out on your own if you want, but at some point that blue tension arrow that I drew sort of originally in the problem must be resolved into X and Y components. This is the way I'm choosing to do it. There are certainly other triangles you could draw up there, but there's mine. Okay, so the sum of the X force is equal to zero. What do I have? Well, I have the hinge force right here. I have the hinge force, hinge in the X direction, and there you go right there, TX minus TX. All that's equal to zero. I don't see any other x forces on the system, so we'll sort of write that. And then we can go ahead and use my funky triangle up there to say, well, the hinge force minus, looks like it's going to be t times the cosine is 75 degrees. All that's equal to zero. Or the x force on the hinge is just sitting there to balance the tension that's in the guy wire. So a bit of, uh, you know, construction insight for you right there. You have this tension here sort of pulling on the top of this strut here or crane to keep it fixed. You can pull as however want, however hard you want or how big of a cable or whatever you want in there, but just keep in mind that you're going to have to construct your hinge accordingly because the horizontal pull of the tension it has to has to exactly equal the horizontal push of the hinge, and there it is right there. So this is sort of related, and there's your first result. Now you don't know T, so you can't find A sub X, but we're still working on this, aren't we? Okay. The next one I'll sort of fill in here 
is that the sum of the y forces are equal to zero. Let's see what we can do with that. Okay? Identify all the y forces. Well, I definitely see the hinge force, the y force of the hinge up right there, that blue arrow. And I see these two weights down, mass of the strut and mass of the hanging weight. So I have a capital MG and minus a little MG, those two things in there. And once again, I've got to return to this funky purple triangle up here where I've got the downwards y point of tension, the TY down like that. Sort of, sort of, the, it looks like uh, I'll go ahead and write the TY in here, minus TY, all that's equal to zero. But if I look carefully here, this TY here is actually T times the sine of 75. Just like the S component involved the cosine, the Y component is going to involve the sine. So I can go ahead and solve for the Y force of the hinge there, and it'll be something like M plus M factoring out the G right there. I always like to see these total weight terms in here. Uh, that's the total downwards weight um, on the strut, the weight of the strut itself plus the, uh, the hanging mass right there. And then I also have the downwards pull of the tension right there, the minus T times the sine of 75 degrees in there. So you can put a box around this and a little bit of insight into how this problem works. Say, well, again, that hinge has to support the horizontal tension you have, but it also has to support in the Y direction any downwards weight that might be on the strut, including the weight of the strut itself, and it also has to include another downwards pull of the tension because of the angle that this guy wire is sort of sitting at right there. There's definitely going to be another downwards force on the hinge that it has to compensate uh, to get this to work. I think it actually made a little sign error, did not, because these are all negative, so it has to be positive as I move it over to the other side. So there we go. See, that downwards pull of the tension actually adds to the weight that the hinge would normally have to support if the tension wasn't there. So there you go. There's another result for you right there. Uh, but again, we still don't know T, so we can't find HX or, X, HX or HY. So what I'd like to do then is now say the sum of the torques are equal to zero. And let's see what we can do about that. So... Here's the strut right here. We like to have the torques equal to zero. And so what we need to do is identify for our torques there, moment arms, forces, and signs of angle between the moment's arms and the forces right there. So there's the axis equal to zero. And so what I have now is I just need to start walking up the strut starting at the axis rotation to sort of go up this way, way identify forces. Looks like the capital MG, the little MG, the tension, and that sort of thing, and just form torques out of them. And I will once again observe a sign convention for torque that looks like this. Clockwise is positive, counterclockwise negative, something like this. So let's just get going on it then. Okay, so starting here, the first force I encounter is the weight of the strut, which looks like would cause a clockwise rotation. That's the positive direction, so I'll put a positive. L over 2, capital MG times the sine of 45 degrees. Okay? Boy, lots of stuff I just wrote down. This is the force. The mg is the force. That's the weight of the strut. Where did the L over 2 come from? Well, <coughs> remember that these, the weight of an object for a uniform object acts at the halfway point, L over 2. So that's the moment arm. This weight acts an L over 2 distance from the pivot, assuming the length of the pivot is L. Next, the next forces we see are the ones at the very end of the strut all the way up here. In particular, we have the tension and the downwards way of the hanging mass. So the downwards way of the hanging mass is probably the easiest one to put in next. It's going to be LL, L times little mg times the sine of 45, okay, something like that. The hanging weight's all the way at the end of the strut. That's why it's L, not L over 2. There's its force, the little mg, and of course sine 45 because this angle in there is 45 degrees just like it was over there. We can finish our torque equation now by, by realizing that we still have the tension up here. And the tension was that original blue arrow that was much cleaner before I messed it up by drawing the components in there. But there's the tension acting there, 50 degrees relative to the strut. So what we have in there then is a minus L, because the tension acts all the way at the end there, times the T, times the sine of 15 degrees, and all that's equal to zero. So this is like the big torque equation right there, and let's just run through it one more time. Visually, you have an axis of rotation right here. At a distance L over 2, you have the weight of the strut acting at 45 degrees. At a distance L, you have the weight of the hanging mass acting at 45 degrees. And at a distance L, you have the tension acting at 15 degrees. If I put all that together, I just see a bunch of RF sine theta plus RF sine theta. In this case, minus because it's going to cause a rotation the other way. RF sine theta. And there you go. So we can put these things together, and I'm looking at this last equation. You'll have to adapt this to whatever problem you have to be working, but it looks like the L's are going to cancel out pretty nicely right in there. 
And it looks like from that I can just solve directly for t and get something like this. Get that t is equal to one half capital Mg times the sine of 45 plus little mg times the sine of 45. All that will be divided by, looks like the sine of 15 degrees. And so from an equation like this, if you look in the textbook and you have all your masses and your g's and so on all ready to go, looks like you get that your tension here is equal to just some number. That will be the required tension in that cable. And yeah, it will be in newtons or something like that. And what can you do with that tension? Well, g, you can go back up to your original equation up here, plug it in for this t, and get the y component of the hinge force. Plug it in for this T, get the X component of the hinge force. So anyway, nice problem. You'll have to adapt it to whatever your needs are, but this is definitely right for the hinge, the hinge, and the tension.